Good morning. Today we're going to demonstrate how to measure the hydraulic conductivity of different materials. Hydraulic conductivity determines how quickly water moves through um, the soils in a catchment to groundwater storage or a stream. Hydraulic conductivity controls the ease at which water will flow through a porous media and is important locally and globally for drinking water extraction, contaminant transport, flood control, and many other aspects of daily life. Using a special equipment called the Darcy permeometer, we can determine this by the falling head method or a constant head method. We will demonstrate the constant head method on the material and the volumetric discharge will be measured from the outflow. By knowing the volumetric discharge, hydraulic gradient, and surface area of the sample, the hydraulic conductivity of each material can be determined through the rearranged Darcy's law. The principle of the constant head method relies on getting a constant laminar flow of water through the soil sample, from high elevation to low elevation. The sample must be well packed and saturated with water before the experiment begins. The samples have been sitting in water to become saturated, and note that there's a space between the material and the top of the ring. For our experiment, we will be adding water to the Darcy permeometers um, until 500 milliliters has been used or until 15 minutes has been up. On the table, we have all the equipment on display to demonstrate this technique. We have a 500 meter graduated cylinder filled with water, which is used to measure how much water we use. Um, we also have a beaker filled with water here. Um, we have rulers to measure the volume of the Darcy permeometers. Um, a stopwatch to uh, time the experiment. Um, we have a data sheet here with all your calculations or your observations on it. And then we have our Darcy permeometers in here filled with different substrates. Um, right now they're sitting in water to keep them saturated. And over here we have a bucket and a two millimeter sieve. The bucket is to catch the water that goes through the permeometers. To calculate hydraulic conductivity, you need a few measurements from the Darcy permeometer. First, you need to know the sample height. So we get that from measuring the total height, which is 6.5 centimeters and then subtracting the space between the substrate and the top, which is 1.5 centimeters. And then you'll also need to know the sample surface area, and to calculate that, you need to know the diameter of the Darcy permeometer, which is 7.5 centimeters. It's important to be organized and ready for the constant head method. Place the sample on top of the bucket and sieve. We're starting with sand. With the 100 ml beaker, fill to the brim with water, being careful not to overflow. And then activate the stopwatch. As the water filters through, use the graduated cylinder to continuously fill the Darcy permeometer with water. Every time you fill the Darcy permeometer, record the time and how much water is added. So I'm going to add water now, and the time is 28 seconds. So I'll record 28 seconds, and then record how much water we used. The time is now 128, 1 minute 28 seconds, and I'm going to fill again. Okay, so I've added water seven times so far, and I'm going to add again, and the time is now six minutes, 30 seconds. So I've done 12 measurements so far, and I'm going to add water for the 13th time, and the time is now 11 minutes and 32 seconds. And our graduated cylinder is now at 125 milliliters. Okay, so we're on our 17th um, measurement. I'm going to add water now. And the time is 14 minutes and 58 seconds.
We've placed our sample on top of the bucket and sieve. We're doing clay this time. With our beaker of water, we're going to fill the Darcy permeometer to the brim and careful not to overflow it. And then we'll start our stopwatch. As the water filters through, we'll use the graduated cylinder to continuously fill the Darcy permeometer with water. Every time we fill the Darcy permeometer, we will record the time and how much water has been added. So now we'll do the first measurement. So we'll add water from the graduated cylinder. And then we'll record the time. It's at 2.25 minutes. And now we'll do our second measurement. And the time is 5 minutes and 20 seconds. So we're going to do the seventh and final measurement now. And the time is 15 minutes. We've placed our sample on top of the bucket and sieve, and we're doing glass beads this time. So with your beaker of water, um, fill the Darcy permeometer to the brim. Careful not to overflow it. And then start the stopwatch. As the water filters through, we're going to use the graduate cylinder to continuously fill the Darcy permeometer with water. Every time we fill it, we will record the time and how much water is added. So we're going to add water and do our first measurement. The time is 3 minutes and 13 seconds. Okay, we'll do our second measurement now. The time is 5 minutes and 23 seconds. And we'll do our final measurement here, which is our seventh measurement. The time is just about 15 minutes.